In this class, we are going to learn about file server in Oracle integration. We are going to look at how file server is provisioned in Oracle integration or is it provisioned out of the box when we subscribe to Oracle integration instance. Also, we are going to look how to manage a file server, what are the security features available in file server and how we can access the file server with the help of SFTP client. With the pictorial description, we are going to explain what is file server. File server comes with Oracle integration cloud instance. When it is enabled, then the user is not worried to create or provision a file server separately. So this comes with the 500 GB space, which is not charged separately. Only charge will be applicable when we are using the FTP adapter, like a message in and out of more than 50 KB will be considered as a message. Like for example, there is a message of 110 KB, then it will be considered as three messages when we divide 110 by 50 KB each. We can access this file server with the help of SFTP client like the WinSCP or any other client which supports the SFTP features. Also, we can make use of Oracle integration REST APIs for file server. With the help of that also, we can access the file server. And also while building on integration, we can make use of FTP adapter and we can communicate with the file server which comes out of the box with Oracle integration. Now let's walk you through the documentation for this file server. I am here in the documentation page by Oracle on using file server in Oracle integration generation 2. On the left side, there is a table of content. I am here in the file server overview. If you click on the about file server, we are having the pictorial description which we had gone through just now in the slides. The primary users of file server includes the Oracle integration administrators, developers and the users. For more information, you can go through this Oracle integration service roles and have our details on this. As I told, we can access this with the help of REST APIs. Now what are the three reasons for which we have to use the file server? First is to eliminate the cost and operational expenses associated with hosting and maintaining a separate SFTP server. Second is creating file based integrations very easily. Third is managing permissions in one place using a common interface. We can manage the file server permissions right from the Oracle integration console. We'll have a look at from where we can do that. Now there is a frequently asked questions section as well over here where you can come over here and check if there is a relevant question which you are having over here and get the answer for like how to access the file server how we can clean up the file server how the file server is metered like i told depending on the size of the message when we communicate with ftp adapter this will be metered and so on and so forth you can have a look at this wiki section coming to the sftp supported clients the most common and the popular are WinSCP and FileZilla we can make use of those and others as well There are few use cases wherein we can use this file server while building an integration. You can have a look at this. From coming to administering the file server. First and the foremost thing we need to enable the file server in the Oracle integration instance in our Oracle cloud account. That will be under here. We'll have a look at this later. Under settings, we'll get the information for connecting to file server with the help of client like the IP address port, what space has been consumed by the user. And if you scroll down further, you can have a in detail description for each of the elements which will be available in the UI for file server settings. Also, we can configure the user like we can upload the SSH key for this user for authentication and we can also manage what permissions this user will have provided the user are already created in the identity cloud service. We cannot create the users directly over here. The users which are created in identity cloud service will be available over here. And also the groups, groups also we need to manage the groups in identity cloud service. And also we can manage the permissions at group level as well. We can create the folders, we can view the folders available in the particular directory. And also we can set the permissions as well from here. And at the last, how to troubleshoot the file server. If you are facing any issues, we can have a look at this. Now let's go to our lab and have a hands on on this file server. First, we will verify whether the file server has been enabled in our Oracle integration instance or not. In order to do that, I am here in the Oracle Cloud account under integration instances. I am clicking on this learning 236 instance, which I have created for my OIC. Here, if you see the file server, it is showing enabled for me. If it is not showing enabled for you, then you need to click on the enable hyperlink, which will be provided over here. 
as it is showing in the documentation if it is not enabled you will have an option to click on this enable button post clicking on that it will show enabled so like this we can enable a file server now let's go into our oracle integration cloud instance i'm here in the oracle integration console in order to access the file server we need to click on this navigation menu or the hamburger menu on the left top corner click on this click on the settings here we, there is an option for file server we have to click on this and we need to click on settings first we'll look at the settings under setting there are five categories first one is the status it will show you the health of the file server our health is good if not if for any issue this will change also it will show the space available in our file server or the sftp server currently i have not used my sftp server so it is showing 500 gb space available there is a status whether it's running or stop we can stop the server as well anytime from here i'm minimizing the status expanding general here we are getting the idle timeout that is the seconds before connection is closed if a client is idle if our client is idle for 240 seconds then the connection will time out we can increase from here as well as we can decrease also there is a ip address and port using which we can connect from our sftp client like win scp or filezilla i'm closing this general and going to default home folder configuration for users for any user we can have a default setting over here like I have given all permissions for all the users if not we can uncheck and we can manage for each and every user from the user level also for the groups we can have the permissions created like which group can read which group can write delete list create folders rename delete and propagate to subfolders under security we can have the authentication type like the password the users can log into this sftp server with the help of username and the password password what we have configured in the oracle idcs also we can make use of key we'll have a walkthrough on how we can generate ssh key upload under users and we can also we'll demonstrate how we can log in without the password only with the help of key with the help of win scp client from our local computer and also there are few settings we can have a look at those over here i'm minimizing this so under files there is a folder structure like home under that you will have the users or the groups under users you will have individual users group will have individual groups within that if we are having a permission then we can create the folders as well in our respective group or users now if you click on the group we'll have the list of all the groups which are created in our oracle identity cloud service it will reflect over here and we can manage the permission for each group by clicking on edit or the configure button over here and we can enable disable we can change the home folder for this group and all, all those things we can do it from here If you click on the users, it will list all the users which are available in identity cloud service for this particular instance. I'm clicking on this users tab. So here is my user for this instance. So I can configure. So what will be the home folder? We can edit from here and the authentication public key as well. We can upload here in the settings. We had seen we can log into our SFTP client with the help of password and key. Now we'll generate SSH key. We don't want to do that. We'll look at the documentation how to do that. If you click on configure file server settings under security, there is authentication type. There is a documentation how we can generate the SSH key pair. We need to click on the generate SSH keys in PIM format. It will open up the documentation page for generating SSH key. Here we can generate SSH key with this command SSH key gen. Let me copy this. Here I have opened up the terminal. Let me paste the SSS keygen command. Click on enter. Enter the file in which to save the key. Let me keep everything default. I don't want the passphrase. It has generated the keys for us. Let us now check that. So those are the keys which are generated. ID, RSA and public key. Private and the public key. Let me open the terminal back again. Now it has generated RSA key. But using minus M PEM with SSH keygen it will generate the PEM format key. So we will generate the PEM format key as a PEM format key is supported by Oracle integration. Copy this. Go to the terminal and paste it over here and click on enter. It will ask for where to save the file. I am giving the name as id.pem. Click on enter. Passphrase I don't want anything. Click on enter. It has generated the PEM files. So it is uh, available over here. PEM and the PEM. 
so it has generated the dot pm and uh, pem public key now let's switch over to our integration instance we will upload the public key over here that is this one pem dot public key click on open click on upload and we need to click on this close button over here so here the landing folder it will show it over here this will be our landing folder so this home folder we can change by clicking on this configure and we can go for custom instead of default now we'll switch over to win scp client and connect to our ftp server i am here in the win scp client i have populated host and address port number and the username what we get from here that is under the general option in settings same i have copied over here username will be our idcs user or the what we use to log in into our oracle integration instance now we have to click on this advanced tab in order to refer the private key so from the advanced site settings we have to click on ssh authentication so under authentication there is an option to refer the private key we need to browse our private key from here by clicking on this three dots now from here if it is not showing up the appropriate key we need to change this to ppk and pem so we will select this dot pem from here and click on open now pen scp will give you a pop up so that it can convert that pem to dot ppk format in order to connect from nsf click on okay it will ask you for the path where it has to store the ppk i will store in the same place where i am having the pem click on save click on okay okay it will populate the path post generating the ppk file click on okay click on save and click on login So we got the permission denied because we were logging into root directory where we don't have the access in order to correct that go to directories here instead of slash we need to go back to our file server we need to copy this home folder path from here copy that and paste it over here click on ok click on save click on login as you can see now we are able to log into our ftp server now here we can make use of ftp adapter to build the integration and we can write a file read a file and we can do other stuff with the file operations in ftp adapter like this we can set up a F file server of the ftp server which comes with oracle integration instance we had seen how we can communicate with this ftp server with the help of in scp client also we have seen how we can log in with the help of the private key or the ppk key in this class